Um, guys, congratulations on the film. Great to have a chance to talk to you. Um, Frederick, let's start with you because man, uh, this was one intense ride as far as I was concerned. Where did this come from in your brain? How did you think about this? You know, what was the idea, the premise for it? To write so, it? Great question. I think as an artist, you know, I always want to do things I'm afraid of, you know, like yeah. if I'm afraid to do something um, like the next film I have coming up, you know, it's like uh, I, I really go for it because I want to be challenged. But what happened was I did a film called The Accompanist, which was a gay love story that takes place in the world of ballet. And it mm -hmm. was obviously exploring more of the feminine side of things and the more um, you know, it was, it was, it was a beautiful film, but it, it's explored certain aspects of, of human nature and art and that sort of thing. And the unity of art and dance mm -hmm. and that, that thing. But with, um, when I, I had seen a film called Rocco and his brothers by, uh, the great director, Lucino Visconti. And I, and I, I just thought this was an absolute masterpiece, you know, right. kind of Italian uh 1960 uh it was ex explored the relationships between five brothers as they come to post-war milan post-war milan and i thought when i saw that film i thought i want to explore men and masculinity because it's not a conversation that's taking place in the current um zeitgeist of all the movements and everybody's trying to get their word in and have you know rights for different organizations and ethnicities and all that and it's all great mm -hmm. but what about men what about us? You know, where where do we fit in? What is a man? You know, and and I think that it just literally poured out of me in two weeks. I just wow. sat down and 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 then when I had finished the script, I thought because um, I do act sometimes. I thought I really want to play the character of Dan because he's he's completely different than me. You know, I'm like I don't like conflict. I'm warm and fuzzy, kind, and you know, I just and so to to have the uh, the gift of being able to uh, to explore this. And then um, we just started pre-production in January uh, 2021. So it was, uh, uh, I'm just a fortunate series of events that I met, you know, Thomas Churchill and Los Angeles Studios. And I knew Mitch from The Accompanist. And then uh, they introduced me to Kyle and Kyle came on board. And so as soon as we sort of had some of those key factors it felt like oh, okay, and I got some investors, which is always nice. Oh, yeah, I need that. <laughs> the money, yeah. And, um, and so um, I can't even remember your question, but I guess it just all kind of came together in a way that was really beautiful. Yeah, um, and Kyle, for you to take on something like this, um, it had to have been, I would think, a big challenge. I mean, uh, in a way, I would think. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, that maybe your soap opera experience kind of helped you with this a little bit. It did in, in um, a few ways, actually. Uh, this is the first film I've done that has had um, as much dialogue as it had. It was, it's, you know, there's only, yeah. with the exception of a, just a couple scenes in the middle with, with Indar Smith, who plays our brother Andrew, in the middle of the movie there, um, it's just Frederick and I. Right. And these scenes are like 10 minutes long um and we're talking the entire time and when i first read the script um i was like wow i've usually films are they don't have that much dialogue it's more kind of visual and and just kind of um lines that are interlaced here and there with an occasional long scene here or there but this movie is it, it's written more like a like a play exactly yeah um so right off the bat um you know i i guess my my years two decades worth of you know soap opera work I have to memorize over 20 pages of dialogue every single day for the, right. for, you know, so, so yeah, I think technically it prepared me for that, but also just the ability to go to the emotional places that I had to go to in this film. Mm -hmm. um, I think any actor, it's not easy and any actor would agree with that. And we were on a tight shooting schedule and we had a lot to do and a relatively short amount of time in terms of you know what it usually takes to shoot a film. Yeah. So I knew that I needed to bring everything emotionally, mentally, and physically I needed to bring to the table and, and on camera as soon as I could and as authentically as I could. You know, yeah. we didn't have all day to shoot two pages for the dialogue, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would absolutely agree with you that both technically and um, well, all around, I, I would say my experience in 
daytime drama definitely prepared me for this. Yeah, program. I would, I would think, yeah, that, that having a lesson work, I've, I've, I've interviewed so many soap stars before and I, and that is the one thing that a gift that you get, if you start your career early on soaps, yeah. you know, you learn that memorization skill. I, I yeah. commend you. I couldn't do it. I, there's no way. So kudos to you. Thank um, you. Yeah. I mean, Frederick, Wow, um, this this movie brings up so many things. Um, look, we don't all get along with our siblings, uh, you know. But what's interesting about this is that you've got three brothers, or well, two, you know, that are brother. One's the, the stepbrother, but three guys who are coming from kind of different generations, different mindsets, things that they've learned over, you know, what your character. Obviously, things have been passed down from the dad, and then Kyle, yours is like you're more of the you know, you, you, you'll go to therapy, you, you're you open, you know, whatever. It's very yeah. interesting to see these dynamics. So what I wanted to know was once you guys started to kind of go at each other and really like, did that kind of reflect, reflect in real life? Like what was downtime? Like, because you must've had like a few beers after every scene. I don't know. <laughs> Frederick, you want to start? <laughs> yeah. It was really interesting because, um, you know, when you wear a lot of hats, like I've been in the producer's guild for you know, 15 years. And I certainly was very involved with the producing part of the film. But um, when we get on set, it's more of a level playing field. And really, I think um, I didn't know Kyle that well. Uh, you know, obviously, we had just met a couple months before she started. So um, when we got on set, there were a couple times where uh, we we got into it a little bit, kind of like brothers would, but it it was interesting because it really helped fuel the work. And and basically every it was a beautiful shoot and everyone got along really well. But there were times when, you know, especially as a producer, you want to just reach across and strangle the other person and you have to just go, oh, okay, well, yeah. all right, let me think about that or something. But it was, um, I think that it, it was a really challenging shoot, especially for me, because I don't have that background in uh, soap opera, you know, 20 pages a day. But I did, uh, I think, have the goal to create something literate. And when we coached with uh, legendary acting coach Larry Moss, he did bring up uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And, and uh, not that we could compare to that, obviously, but just that idea of a literate drama that where everything is communicated through words mm -hmm. and it, we don't see that in films and it, it's it you know Mike Nichols was sort of the unofficial you know like my hero anyway and when you have films like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, The Graduate, Carnal Knowledge, one of my all-time favorites, Closer, you know and investigating those relationships between men and women mm -hmm. and we don't we don't get that nowadays and I'm, I'm very proud of the film in that we, I, at least from the audiences and the people that I've talked to, it holds people's attention because you want to know what's sure. going to happen next. Oh yeah, you definitely, that, that is a for sure, you know? And, and Kyle, I'm wondering for you, you know, in addition to all the other things that you've done over the years, what do you learn about yourself after this, working on a film like this? Like, how does it change you? Because there's so much text, so much dialogue, there's so much reality in what is being said here with these brothers. There's a lot of people can yeah. relate to this stuff. So at the end of it, it was kind of like, did I change? Did it make me think? Well, yeah, it's a great question. I I, I think I'll repeat what you just said that, <laughs> you know, I, I've i never gone, I've never been on the, you know, on Steven's receiving end of all that, you know, the, the trauma, the drama, <laughs> the, the actual, vitriol sometimes it was spit you know things like that um or just the intensity of the, the relationship with the two brothers so uh, afterwards i mean i had to go so deep into into steven's psyche um to make this this performance as authentic as possible and as organic as possible that i mean after the shoot yeah there was like a couple weeks of decompression <laughs> um but it also you know i had obviously i i can't give away I can't give away the ending. So no, no. the point is, I've never gone through what Stephen has gone through. We'll just blanket it by saying that. Yeah. And I and I think that it really opened my eyes to the people that have, and mm. um, it's just an overwhelming level of of compassion, you know. And um, for people, 
not just for for Stephen, but for also his brother Dan and everything that Dan's gone through. And is you know, you know, it's just just a, a general up leveling of of empathy, sympathy, compassion, the whole thing. Um, just opened me up. And I think yeah. that was a very beautiful thing. And I think that that's the power of film, the people that watch it and the people that are in front of the camera doing it, you know? Yeah. And I think it was, it was a really, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 No, it was, it's like I said, I, I, wow, it was, it was amazing. It got me going right to the end. Just to wrap it up, you know, Kyle said earlier that um, it, it was kind of uh, like a play, like the, the dialogue and everything. And I, as I was watching this, I go, man, I could see this on the Broadway stage. Any thoughts of this, <laughs> like for taking it to the stage? Because it could yes, work really yes, well. I, <laughs> I know, and, I, and it's amazing because, um, yeah, that's going to happen, God willing. Uh, we, we, uh, I, I did write the play, yeah. and uh, that was challenging because I'm not a playwright, but um, I'm working with the dramaturge, and uh, I don't know if, Kyle would like to to continue hey, this. Kyle, take some break but... from your soap stuff. Come on. <laughs> um, schedule, yeah, schedule, yeah. Uh, schedule permitting. We'll, we'll... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it might be hard for him considering his shooting schedule, but um, yeah. yeah. So it it is in the works, and uh, it it um, what's exciting about doing the play um, is that uh, we can do a lot of things in live theater that we could not do in film because we sure. had. I don't want to freak anybody out, but we had to really tone this down because, I mean, even when Kyle first read it, he was going to pass on it. I mean, he had to think about it because it was it was pretty out there. Yeah. And so we toned it down for audiences because we don't want to alienate our audiences, but we want to get our message across. Right. But in theater, hey, anything goes. So watch yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I would look forward to that. I, I would definitely get a ticket to see this on screen uh, on stage. Yeah. So thank you so much, you guys, for your time today, really. And uh, and just, you know, a personal note, Kyle, my mother thanks you so much for many years of soaps. She never <laughs> misses a day of watching her soaps. And I swear as her daughter, like, you know, growing up, I used to come in and watch things. That I, I don't have the time as much. But thank it. God some of them are still on the air, right? With all the streaming services. Oh, gosh. I well, please tell your mother I'm that I say hello and I'm so I grateful. I will. I will. She'll be very thrilled. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm. It's uh, we're still rocking and rolling. These shows still get millions of viewers a day. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I'm very, very grateful, very blessed. Well, good on you, and thank you guys for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Bonnie. Really, really great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye. bye.